we love to be number one in a lot of things. In Texas, though, we are number one in the nation that are children on you know, children that are food insecure. More children in Texas go hungry or have to search for the resources they need to sustain themselves daily than in any other state. And folks, I got to tell you, as Texans, we can do better. As Texans, we should do better. And as Texans, we will do better, thanks to you right here today, who are committed to making that change. Texas has an abundance of resources. If you've talked to anybody in the food bank lately, you know that food bank activity and traffic has gone up 30% over this last year. Uh, that, is a, that is a statistic that is unfortunate when you have a state that is as strong as our state, that is as powerful as Texas is, and it has the resources that are available. At the Texas Department of Agriculture, we are very excited to have the opportunity to obviously work with our state's farmers and ranchers. But one of the things that we're particularly excited about is matching up that understanding of what our state's farmers and ranchers do with those who no longer live on farms and ranches in Texas. And as big as Texas is and as sprawling as our great state is, 80% of our citizens now live in urban areas. More, any of you live in, on a farm or ranch in here today? A few of you still do. How many of you of your parents lived on a farm or ranch? The no, hands go way up. We're getting today where fewer and fewer people understand the production and what goes on at our farms and ranches to make food available. So many of our kids today think that uh, chicken comes boneless and skinless and ready for the microwave. They fail to remember there's an entire process that goes along before that food is, is ready to them. And it's a real sad situation when we're number one in children that are food insecure and number two overall in population that have difficult times finding access to the food they need. I don't think it's a matter of lack of resources. I think it is a matter of matching up the resources with that need. And that's why I think your involvement in influencing legislation like you did last year, and last session, to ensure that you have more opportunities for faith-based organizations and churches to be involved in the process is a big part of the answer. Because in a perfect world, Texas Department of Agriculture wouldn't be involved at all because our churches would be filling that need. We don't live in a perfect world, but we live in a perfect time where each of us can have a positive impact on the communities in which we live. And that's why I'm excited about the work that you're doing and the work that, that we have to do at the Texas Department of Agriculture. But one of the areas that really ties us from the farmer or rancher directly to the urban consumer is our food and nutrition program. And we're really excited about having those, those responsibilities. And those responsibilities have come on of late because we continue to see the need there. The Texas Department of Agriculture administers the nation's largest public school nutrition program. I love to go to California and tell my counterparts there that we're the biggest in the nation. It's not them. And we work with schools all across the state to make certain that our children have access to healthy, nutritious foods. And ladies... I'm here to tell you that our schools have stepped up to the challenge in a very uh, good and beneficial way. They, we have raised the standards of nutrition. Our schools and our food service directors and our cafeteria workers that work extremely hard to ensure that our children have what they need during the school day. But guess where we're losing our kids? Summers, after schools, during the weekends. Not only are we number one in the nation that and children that are food insecure, but we also rank way too high in the nation who ch of children that are overweight or, ob or obese. Now, you, can't, you, you have to think, well, how can that be? We're, we're leading in children that don't get food, but yet we're leading in children that get too much food. Well, it's really a matter of not the right kinds of food. It's, it's getting a food that don't have the nutritional content that you work to and your families to ensure that they have. We started a new slogan called the three E's of healthy living. The three E's of healthy living is patterned after the three R's that we learned in school. You remember that? Recess, romance, <laughs> recreation. Maybe that's why I had trouble in school. I don't know. I still remember the, the real three R's and you do too. And that's why we're trying to teach the three E's of healthy living. Education, exercise, and eating right. Because 
Eating right alone doesn't get you to where you need to be. Exercise alone doesn't. It's all about education, exercise, and eating right. Teaching the right types of choices to make. Exercise because it makes you stronger and healthier, and eating right makes you look better and feel better. And we need to educate our kids because they aren't getting it at home, are they? They just aren't getting the right message at home. Uh, uh, both parents are working today, spending less time with their children, less time reinforcing those messages. Many of our homes today only have one parent, and one parent is working two jobs. Our schools are not only asked to educate our kids today in so many instances, they're asked to raise them as well, and that's not the role of the school. And that makes it so much more difficult to meet the academic standards that they need to meet. So anything that we can do to reinforce that positive message, the three E's of healthy living, education, exercising, eating right is very important. But recognizing that we, our schools are doing a good job, but their ability to influence our children are limited. Uh, we also, uh, the legislature, uh, gave us the responsibility for our summer food nutrition programs. And uh, the USDA has programs that we administer at the Texas Department of Agriculture. And so all across Texas, we have sites that are available for children that most of it is the same type of criteria to be eligible for a school lunch. Uh, that are, we have summer meals and snacks that are available for our kids when we have found them to be most vulnerable and not getting the type of nutrition they need. But if we're number one in the nation in children that are food insecure, it's very obvious to me that although we have these sites, we're not matching up our kids where the, where the available resources are. And so what we started this last year was the Texas Department of Agriculture Mayor's Challenge. And what I decided to do was to challenge every mayor in Texas to see who could have the greatest number of kids increase being served at the summer uh, feeding sites. And the way that we do that is to have more feeding sites and more volunteers to get the word out to make certain that kids know that these resources are available. We worked with uh, Texas faith-based communities to have these available. Are these on the back shelf somewhere available? Oh, they're in your packets. The, the, this has many opportunities for you to be involved and to you to have an active role and shaping the lives of your children and having a positive impact on your community. These are just the few of the things that we're doing at the Texas Department of Agriculture to make certain that Texas continues to be a place that, that um, you know, our parents and our grandparents would be proud of, but also a state that our children and grandchildren can prosper in. And I think it's up to each of us to play that role individually to take on that responsibility and to make a difference. And I thank you for your dedication to doing just that. Thank you so much for letting me be here today.